Hi everyone, this is Terry from Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs. We are your kimono vendor at Anime Expo. Unfortunately, we can't be with you this year in Kentia Hall, but we wanted to bring you some content working together with Anime Expo Lite that you could enjoy in the comfort of your home. This segment features an authentic Edo period samurai armor set. This set comes from the Higuchi family who served the Sonata clan. The Sonata clan were based out of present-day Nagano City in a place called Matsushiro Castle. Now, parts of Matsushiro Castle are destroyed, but parts of the area still exist, including the original Higuchi house that this armor set came from. The armor set is complete and it features all of its parts. One of the features of the armor set is the kabuto. The kabuto is the helm. The helm is shaped essentially to deflect arrow shot, and that is why it has these semicircular plates that are strung along the back of the neck. The kabuto also extends to form wings towards the front, and again, these were designed to help deflect arrow shots. One of the prominent features of the kabuto is the maedate, the maedate is a figure on the front of the helm, and this figure can be anything from a half moon shape like we see in this example, to dragons, to horns. This maedate is a pretty typical one for the Edo period when this armor was created. The next piece is the menpo, or the facial covering. The facial covering features two different plates, one for the nose and the upper lip, and then one for the cheeks and the bottom part of the face. Now this mempo also has several protrusions that help keep the strap that secures the kabuto to the head in place underneath the chin. Another feature of the mempo is an attached throat guard which you can see underneath the strap of the kabuto. So this helps to protect the throat from any piercing. The next portion of the armor is called the dull. The dull is the chest guard, and this dull is the largest piece of armor in the entire set. The dull is constructed of semicircular plates that are laced together. And this allows for the doll to be a little bit flexible, but also at the same time capable of deflecting both stabbing and arrow shot. There are oftentimes hooks attached to various doll. Um, this one has two in the front here, and those hooks could be used to suspend tools or water bottles or any piece that is important in the process of wearing the armor. Attached to the doll are what's called kusazuri. Kusazuri are small sections of slightly curved armor laced together in a similar way as the rest of the doll. These swing somewhat freely um, and they are placed around the body in the front, the sides, and in the back to further protect the trunk from stabbings and from arrow shots. As you can imagine, since the doll is made out of iron plates, this could be a little uncomfortable to wear, especially if parts of those plates are digging into your flesh. So samurai would typically wrap themselves in cloth to help create a buffer between the armor and their bodies. This would also help the armor to sit properly on the hip line. Another way that the armor would be secured to the body is through the use of the obi. Now, you might think of the word obi in the modern context of an obi that's wrapped around a kimono. But in this case, for samurai armor, the obi is essentially a short padded belt, in a way, that is tied between the bottom of the dol and the top of the kusazuri. And this, again, helps to keep the dol more secured around the body. The kote are arm guards that start at the shoulder and extend all the way down to the wrist. They're attached to the dol at the shoulder using a small fabric loop. The kote are typically made out of indigo dyed fabric that is then covered with an elaborate brocade. That brocade is stitched with small plates and chains. The plates and chains provide a combination of protection and flexibility and also make sure that the kote don't weigh too much. 
The cote end in small hand-shaped plates that are meant to protect at least the top portion of the hand. And then there is a small hinged section that helps to cover the knuckles. One of the prominent parts of samurai armor is, of course, the sore. Sore means sleeve, but in this case, it's more like a sleeve guard. The sore are flat, stitched plates of armor that are meant to deflect arrow shots or stabbings. They sort of move as you move, so they provide a little bit of a mobile shield, essentially, for the top part of your body. Early samurai armor did not have any kind of extra protection beneath the dole for the legs, but because samurai were typically on horseback, their legs, their knees, were unprotected. So the haidate was created. The haidate is a skirt-like extra piece that is secured to the waist underneath the kusazuri. The haidate sit along the knees and along parts of the thighs to protect the lower part of the body from arrow shots. The sineate, or greaves, are designed to protect the shins from arrow shot or from stabbing. These sineate are made out of metal plates on top of both leather and fabric. The leather portions are for where your legs might brush together, and so that leather is stronger than the fabric, obviously. The fabric portion has indigo dyed fabric in the back and then brocade in the front. That brocade is sashiko stitched in a hexagon pattern. You'll see that hexagon pattern in other parts of samurai armor. It's very common. That hexagon pattern references a classic Japanese motif of tortoise shell, and that tortoise shell motif means protection. One of the most common questions that we get about this armor set is, did it see combat? Did anyone wear it in battle? But what I think a lot of Americans don't remember is that the Edo period was a time of relative peace in Japan. So by the time the 1800s came around, which was about when the set was constructed, you didn't see the kind of epic battles that you might have otherwise read about in other times in Japanese history. At Tangerine Mountain, we have a traveling exhibition of kimono and other Japanese cultural artifacts that has visited several cities in the United States. And this samurai armor set has been part of that exhibition. So if you want to learn more about it, please visit us at www.tangerinemountain.com and look for it underneath the section traveling exhibition. We also have our social media at Facebook slash Tangerine Mountain and at Instagram at, at Tangerine Kimono. So please visit us there. We want to thank everybody at Anime Expo Light and we hope that you enjoyed this segment. Thank you.